Just fired up about them, not you know comparing them to anybody, but um, we've obviously had limited time, but two days out there, he's been a ball hawk. He's attacking the process, um, fits really well with the culture, and excited to, um, to see him improve. Same question with Kyrie Jackson. Just what, what impressed you about him during spring ball in the last few days? Yeah, you know, post spring ball, um, you, you definitely see a glimpse of greatness there, and that's our responsibility to bring it out of him. So consistent play is what we're challenging from him. And, um, you know, after two days, he's been attacking that. From last year to this year, what are some of the things that you really want to see this defense improve upon? Everything. Yeah, we, we, um, we want to be a defense that's, that's respected and feared. And the only way we get there is what we do in the body of work every single day out here. So um, we had uh, a lot of things we focus on and improved and a lot of things that um, we need to get better at. What are some of those things, Tosh, in terms of situational awareness and pass defense, like third and seven plus? Just mm -hmm. how, how do you, when you have a veteran group in the secondary in particular, with a lot of juniors, a lot of seniors, fifth, sixth year guys, just how do you attack and address situational awareness? Yeah, we, uh, we just got to get better um, at what we're doing. You know, that was the, one of the coolest things about the continuity um, of the staff and having the ability to focus on a self scout is to see where we went wrong, see where we went right, um, and fix the things where we went wrong. So obviously, um, third down defense, you know, pass defense was something that we didn't address, um, you know, and then really diving into those statistics, never assuming anything. So, you know, when you when you focus on something and you actually don't see a whole lot of balls going over the top, you know, that it's it's not like you look at a statistic and then make um, determination from that. You know, we want to always allow the evidence to drive the theory. And so when we get in there and dive deep, something we can do a lot better is um, is um, the shallow and short game passing um, defense and the way we attack, um, the coverages we call, and the tackles we can make in space. More aggression. Um, just going to improve at everything. If we want to, I would love to improve our aggression. Absolutely. What are your thoughts on the uh, inside linebacker crew as a whole? Uh, really fired up and excited um, to see them operate. Um, thought we made some major strides um, in the spring um, as a whole. And, um, you know, every, um, every day trying to get something, just one thing out of each of them. So um, targeting, you know, what can each individual improve at and then collectively we grow as a group. What, what did, I guess there was just a change in body type at linebacker. It seemed like this offseason players packing on weight, some guys moving over from safety and, and gaining weight. Kind of what, what behind that and what do you want those players to look like when you, you strap it on next month? Yeah, I mean, it's important um, from what we do. We got to be able to run and run fast, but that doesn't mean um, it's a finesse group by any means. So it's a versatile position. It's a position that's got to strike with physicality and be in position to stop the run. But it's also a position that's, um, you know, got to run with three and specific concepts, got to do some things um, that's that's not easy to do. So uh, you need a well-rounded individual that can strike, attack, that can rush, that can stop the run. Um, and uh, thankfully, being at Oregon, um, we believe we can both recruit and then add and develop those individuals. Your defense is going up against an offense that had a lot of success last season, returning a lot of veteran players. Um, just how fun has it been for you to now be in fall camp and competing against an offense like that and kind of showing off the skills that you have really worked on growing in the spring? Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, again, being at Oregon, iron sharpens iron. So got a, a lot of great offensive players out there. Um, we got plenty of great defensive players as well. So um, now, you know, it's just the, the competitive edge that, w that each br group brings it every single day. That's the focus. Um, you know, Coach Stein and the offense are doing a lot of um, great things for us that are going to prepare us better for the season as far as what they're doing on offense as well and for us to adjust to that. So it's great to see. Tashim and Evan both played in the box and, and deep, a good, good bit deep in the spring. What do you like about them deep and how much does – guys like Cole and Jaleel and Nickel kind of play into whether or not you keep them deep or move them back in the box a little bit. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the focal point of their position, you know, you're going to ask those guys, um, obviously, to play a half-field safety, to play in the box, to cover man-to-man. -man. We're going to bring those guys in pressures as well. So, um, again, it's an individual that's capable of doing all that and, and uh, confident that those guys, along with uh, Steve Stevens, along with Brian Addison, you know, we got a group there that's thriving off of each other, competing, um, and uh, just excited to continue to see their development, really. It's kind of been billed as the European quarterback in the Pac-12. As a defensive coach, how much motivation does that give you? 
Well, I think, um, you know, I played in this conference. My quarterback was Aaron Rodgers, um, played against multiple Heisman Trophy winners. Um, this conference has an awesome reputation. So uh, offense, you know, excels and, and it all starts with the quarterback. So I think that's just consistent within this conference. You know, um, it makes it harder and uh, we love that challenge. Um, and uh, we're going to do our best to affect those guys. How do you and Coach Stein kind of work together to fill each other's gaps? When you see something on the defensive end, maybe he notices that needs fixed, or you see something on the offense, when you guys do something right, how, do your, how does your guys' relationship? Yeah, well, I other? think really highly of the man. Um, I think he's an elite coach, and um, m you know, probably most importantly, just the continuity with, within us as a staff. You know, he's someone that's just going to walk into my office or I'm going to walk into his office. And if there's a certain look we want to see or something we want to do, us both being open minded to be able to do that um, and work with each other. So it all starts there. And again, just naturally from what they're doing, um, there's, a, there's a lot of additions there that are difficult to prepare for. So really good for us to see them. What does a healthy popo offer you guys at that zero and shade, particularly from pass rush aspect that is just missing at times last season. What does he offer you? Yeah, any anytime you ask me a question um, regarding a large man that can move fast and strike with violence and rush the passer, um, it's it's going to excite us. So, you know, uh, that's what Popo does. So um, what I respect about Popo is what he's been doing off the field with body preservation, the ways of attacking his rehab, um, his diet. You know, when you look at his weight, sometimes it's surprising of what he is. And then when you see him move out there, so Really excited about it, um, you know, and of how, how how he's attacking every day, and um, you know now with him it's about getting the rust off, you know, um, getting in tune schematically, and then uh, of course improving from the fundamentals and technique. On that same note, what what's impressed you about Jordan Burch since he got here? What makes him special? Yeah, I mean, again, it's a guy with with the right measurables, right? So it's an individual that um, there's there's a quite a few individuals that play up front in the National Football League that look like him. So um, uh, the big challenge to Jordan is, is to play with the physicality, um, to, to, to play with a relentless effort at it consistently. So you see those flashes with them, and when you see it, you see greatness. Um, and again, it, it's our job to really bring that out of them. I know connection is one of your DNA traits. Just how, what we, how would you describe your connection? with the defensive players and just how has that really grown and a benefit do you think in the spring heading into fall camp? Yeah, well, around 15 years ago, but before not knowing anything about the coaching world and converting um, from, a, from an ex-player to that profession, um, I learned quickly that just uh, connecting with your players and, and playing with a relentless effort puts you, puts you in a position to have a lot of success. So um, I think, uh, you know, that's, it's, it's important for us and our job to reach out to these guys. Um, you know, I'm doing something right now where I try to meet with a minimal of two players a day um, and, and really not talk a whole lot about football, you know, but to just dive in and um, check on the mental health and, you know, something might come out, about, come out with my family or their family. And ultimately, we're going to get a lot better result out there on the field um, if, if we're truly playing for something bigger than just ourselves.